As we continue our work with similar figures and especially similar triangles, we're now going to actually move into how to prove the triangles are similar. And just like with congruence, we can prove similarity by proving that all angles are congruent and that all sides are proportionate. But also like congruence theorems, we can limit down to only certain parts of these in order to also establish congruence because, or similarity because the other parts would come along with these ideas. So we're going to start with our postulate. Postulate 7-1 is the angle-angle similarity postulate. This one states, if two angles on one triangle are congruent to two angles on another triangle, then the triangles are similar. And the reason this works is that we have in this area uh, the third angle postulate, which states that if two angles are congruent to one another, the third one has to be. So looking at the left pair of triangles here, are these two triangles similar? And again, with geometry, you can't always go by the way things appear. You have to use the information that's given. We know that we have two 90-degree angles, one in each triangle. So if we can prove that one more angle is congruent, then we would have an angle-angle similarity. But I have this 39, and I have this 51. Question becomes, what's the missing angle? Well, we know from our triangle angle sum theorem that the sum of these three angles has to be 180 degrees. So we simply say 180 minus 90 gives us 90. Now if we subtract the 39 from that, 90 minus 30 is 60, 60 minus 9 is 51. So this missing angle is 51 degrees. We now have the right angles being congruent and this 51 degree angle being congruent. That means that these two triangles are similar. So we can simply say, yes, they are. Next, the triangles on the right. Are these similar? Well, we're going to go through the same process. We know that we have isosceles triangles here because of the markings. And our isosceles angle theorem tells us that the angles opposite those congruent sides are congruent to one another. That means that down here we have a 68 degrees and we don't know what we have left on the other because this is not opposite one of those congruent sides. But what is missing? We can calculate what else has to be in for this third angle based on our angle sums theorem. So 68 plus 68 is 136. 180 minus 136 is going to be equal to 44 degrees. So since this is 44 degrees and we know that these remaining two on the other one have to be congruent, there is no way that everything could be the same as what we have here already. So on this one we are going to say no, these triangles are not similar. But along with this one postulate, we also have similarity theorems, just like we have congruence theorems. So let's take a look at a couple of those. First up is our side angle side similarity theorem. We're calling this theorem 7-1. This one states, if one angle from one triangle is congruent to an angle in another triangle, and the sides that include that angle are proportionate, then the triangles are similar. Next, we have theorem, what's called the side-side-side similarity theorem, which is theorem 7-2, and it reads, if the corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So again, we have a couple diagrams. Let's take a look at what we have to work with. For the set on the left, triangles ABC and EFG, we need to take a look to see if we have one of these two items available to us. We can't work off of angle-angle similarity theorem or postulate because we don't have any angle measurements. 
So what can we work with here is the fact that in both of these triangles, we have all three sides. They are both isosceles triangles due to the fact of a pair of congruent sides on each one. So what we will do is attempt to set up a similarity or a proportional system based on the side lengths. We'll put the longest side of the small triangle to the longest side of the large triangle and then work our way down. So is 9 or what is the ratio of 9 twelfths? Well 9 twelfths, both these are multiples of 3, so it sim simplifies down to 3 fourths. Next, we'll take 6 eighths. And since both of them are the same, both remaining sets, are, that is, we can use this to simply say that they all simplify down to 3 fourths. Since all sides form a proportionality, then the corresponding sides are proportional and we have the requirements necessary for a side-side-side similarity. Now, a similarity statement, we're going to say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle FEG. And we're going to maintain that order that we had the same in congruence theorems. So we have a proportionality of all sides, therefore we have a side-side-side similarity. Now we can prove similarity using a two-column proof, a flow proof, or a paragraph proof, same as what we were doing for congruence. For convenience of the space provided here, I'm just doing it verbally. Next, let's take a look at the triangles on the right. We have triangle ALW and triangle ACE. And we want to know, are these two similar? Well, we do share a right angle. So by reflexive property in both of them, angle A is congruent to angle A. We now have the start for a side angle side similarity if we can prove that the two sides that make up that angle are proportionate. So for triangle ALW, our two side lengths are 8 and 6. So we're going to start setting up our proportionality. We have 8 and 6 for our two small, the two sides of our small triangle. Next, for our large triangle, triangle ACE, how long is the sides that correspond? How, for, we started with AL, so the corresponding side is AC, and its length is going to be 8 plus 8, which is, of course, 16. Next, the 6 was from side length AW. The corresponding side is AE. And that sum is going to be 6 plus 6, which is 12. And we want to know, do these form a valid proportion? Well, 8 sixteenths is simply 1 half. And 6 twelfths, again, is 1 half. So yes, these ones are proportionate, so we will be able to justify a similarity using our side angle side similarity theorem. Now our similarity statement triangle ALW is similar to triangle ACE. We can use application of similarities to do what is called indirect measurement. Now indirect measurement is finding the size of something without going out and grabbing a tape measure and directly calculating or figuring out what that is. So what we're going to do is establish a set of similar triangles and then use proportional reasoning to find the missing piece. We have here a picture, random picture of a home that is three stories tall. 
and somebody wants to know how tall it is because it needs to have some work done up here in the gables and area of the roof. They want to know for safety reasons how high up they're going to be. Now there is a principle and we'll have to reference here in physics that says that when you have a reflection what's called the angle of incident is congruent to the angle of reflection. And what that means is that if I were to back up and place a mirror on the ground and then I were to stand a certain distance away and look down on that mirror that the angle the light hits the mirror from me is going to be the same angle that it's going to reflect back up to get the roof of the house. So if I can figure out a proportional reasoning here, I would be able to establish the height of the house. Well, both of these are right angles for our viewing, and my eyes are about five and a half feet above the ground. So if I'm standing eight feet from the mirror, and the mirror itself is 60 feet from the house, how can I establish the height of the house? Well, we have an angle-angle similarity postulate situation. Since we know that both have right angles, and both share this angle, due to the angle of incident, angle of reflection, that the third angles would have to be the same, and that gives us a similarity. So what we do now is we take our information and we place it into a proportion. Five and a half feet compared to eight feet, so we're all in the same type of unit, has to be equal to the height of the house divided by 60 feet. And then working some cross products, the product of the means and the product of the extremes, we come out with our extremes product being 330, 5 and a half times 60. And this is going to equal 8 times h, the product of the means. Using our division property of equality, I come out with the height of the building, or the height of the house up to that gazebo, as 41 and a quarter feet. So, I know how large of a ladder I need to bring. I know what type of safety precautions are going to be required in order to keep the workers up doing this work safe. So similar triangles can help us find things that we can't measure directly and then work accordingly to that. So make sure you have this information down, the theorems and postulates ready to be used because we are going to use them as we move forward.